Welcome back to the YouTube Barber Academy. So it was brought to my attention on the Barber School Live episode that we did on Erase the Skin Line that many of you would like a deeper dive into the subject so you can understand it fully. So in this video, without a doubt, you're going to learn how to remove a skin line no matter how harsh you decide to put it in. Be honest. How many times have you watched one of these tutorials, you charged in to do it because you felt like you had all the tools to do it, and you wound up falling flat? Well, I got some good news. Today, you're going to build a deeper understanding of how to do this, and with enough practice, you can master this. So let's start with some of the basics. First off, I could easily tell you how to do this, but if we're not on the same page with our tools, then you're not going to be able to complete this successfully. Zero gapped. That's a term that's thrown around in our industry an awful lot. All it really refers to is the amount of gap between the cutting blade and the comb blade when the clipper is in the closed position. Simply push the lever all the way down and now you're in the open position. Most clipper companies claim that in the open position, their clipper will cut to a number one. Also, they claim that in the closed position, they will cut to three zeros. What does this mean and why is it important? It means that we have everything we need between the number one and the triple zero without adding any of the guards. If you need a deeper understanding on how to zero gap your clipper than this, you can check out one of those videos and then you can come back to this video so that you totally get it and you got your stuff set up before we get into it. Secondly, this is a gamma absolute hitter, but this is a trimmer. Now, the difference between clippers and trimmers is clippers are for cutting the interior lengths of the hair and trimmers are for doing the edging and lining around the back and sides. So we can also use our trimmer to aid us in our skin fade. Most trimmers, the manufacturers claim that they cut down to five zeros. So if this is set to five zeros and this is set to three zeros, that means that the distance between these two is very close together which is going to make it easy when we get into fading and trying to do the blend. In order to remove that skin line successfully, you will need to gradually take hair from however long you want it to be all the way down to skin. And we're gonna have to hit every single length in between. Lastly, you're gonna need your electric shaver. Whatever electric shaver you choose to use is fine. Now, we have our equipment set up properly. This is as close as we can get it to this, okay? And then this is as close as we can get it to this. So what that means is all our tools are balanced and they will work well with each other so that we can hit every length we need to from skin into whatever length that we want to take it. Okay, now that we understand that putting the clipper in the open position is going to leave the hair longer and putting in the closed position is going to cut the hair closer or leave it shorter. Let's talk for a second about this skin line and the process in which we use to arrive to this skin line. Many barbers are going to use their trimmers to put the skin line in. That's fine. That'll get you by. But Many barbers are also going to use a detachable clipper to remove a large amount of bulk because it's going to be more efficient. However, if you don't have anything other than a trimmer, that's fine. Let's call this the trimmer line, okay? And I'm going to represent that by putting a T. And we now understand that that's actually going to be five zeros. So I'll just put five with a Z, okay? Just so we know, a trimmer is going to cut to five zeros. It's really important that you set yourself up correctly before we even try to remove the line. So just with that being said, I'll take my electric shaver, below, all this hair should be completely gone, and I can take my electric shaver below, turn it on, and as I come close to that line, I'll begin kind of flicking away. Very, very important here when you go to remove your skin lines that this is done correctly. So make sure that from skin to this trimmer line, it's blended good. And if you have your trimmer set up properly, like we talked about, it's gonna come out easy. It's gonna be a little bit of practice you might need. You might need to come down with the grain, tap it a few times, but trust me, you'll get it. Also, before we move into the higher length of this hair, many clients are going to come in with their hair super, super long. And if that's the case, you're going to need to pre-cut this hair. If you notice, all the skin fades that you're going to see me do, that's already been pre-cut to about a 1.5. So all we really need to do is we need to get to five zeros up to 1.5. And we're going to do that easy. So we're going to begin by putting your clipper in the open position and we're going to simply make a second line. So when I make this line, I like to actually hold the clipper 
just like this. I like to almost pinch the clipper just like this, and I make my second line. I keep it anchored on the head the entire time. I'm not flicking out or away or leaving the head, and I'm not doing anything like this. We don't ever do that. The way that I would do it, even though this board's flopping, is I keep, I maintain pressure, hold it flat on the head. This is a key to consistency. Like I said before, all these guards are set up to help you succeed. If it's not being helped flush, you're gonna wind up manipulating the length that the guard was intended to give you. So we don't wanna do that. We put our open taper line in, and we now have two lines to deal with, just like you see in the video here. Now I'm just gonna click this once. The Gamma Ergo is great, it has the clicks. It's not the only one with the clicks, but it has the clicks. So I'm just going to click this one click towards closed. Now I'm gonna come pretty close to my previous line, but I'm actually going to stay just a little bit below. Now another key here, other than staying flat, is the moment I begin closing it, even one notch, the moment I begin closing it even one notch, I want to try to maintain a slight angle to how I hold it. I try not to bring it up flat. Bringing it up flat is going to cause another line a lot of times, and I don't want to cause another line. The next one, we click it one more time, and guess what? We're actually going to stay just a little bit lower than we were in the previous step, and we're going to come up and we're gonna make sure that we're keeping it flat and definitely make sure that you're maintaining your angles. And eventually we're gonna to get to the last click here once we get one more click on the gamma and then we'll get to the last click and we're only going to travel over where that original trimmer line was. And you're gonna notice like magic, if you fade from top to bottom, it's gonna disappear and it's gonna look good. Now, it's very possible that you're dealing with some kind of harsh hair which means that there could be a chance where you might have to return back to the same thing that you put the line in with. In this case, even when I use a detachable, I will return back to my trimmer. So simply return back to your trimmer and flick out whatever's left of the line and it's gonna be simple. Now, if you still have troubles between this, you might have to go back to your electric shaver, which tells me that you probably didn't do a very thorough job in the very beginning, which means that in your next try, I want you to make sure that you focus on that step and make sure that you execute it properly. So in the next, example, we're doing the exact same thing. Now, a lot of people ask me, how much space should I leave for a guideline? Okay. And that just depends on the amount of space that you have to work with. But if I wanted to make this really, really easy to see, now that we understand how to arrive through phase one of my barber live school, I've separated everything into phases. And phase one is getting myself ready to begin the execution of the fade. Phase two, clipper over comb. Phase three, actually the blend. So in the phase three of the blend, let's just say I stretch this way out. I make this really stretched out just so we can understand it real easy. Put the clipper in the open position, come all the way up to here. Now, click it once, only come up to here, right? Click it once, only come up to here. Click it one more time, only to here. And now that final click, I'm rocking right over top of that line. And look at how easy, how easy you can remove this. Now I'm gonna throw a little trick your way. First things first, this clipper in the open position with no guard on it is gonna leave you at about the same length if I take my half guard, which is a 1 16th according to wall, and I'm going to put it in the closed position. So guess what? This in the closed position with the half guard is gonna leave you at about the exact same length. And for some miraculous reason, it makes the blend super, super easy to do. So we could actually do the exact same steps that we had we put our trimmer line back in the way that we did, and instead of attacking with no guard on and open, all the way in the open position, we're gonna attack with the half guard on in the full closed position, and we're gonna perform the exact same step, where we create another weight line. And this line here, we also need to make sure that whether you're using this system or not, you need to make sure that when you put in that second weight line, it's exactly the same on both sides of the head. If it's higher on one side of the head, well, guess what? Your fade's gonna wind up higher on that side of the head, and we don't want that. But we're not talking about all that today. We're just talking about how to get rid of this harsh skin line, which means that once we've taken that step, we can take this guard off, open this up, and we can actually travel up right about to that line with it in the open position, and then begin our clicking and our moving process all the way down. Now, that we're starting to get a better understanding of what's going on here, let's just talk a little bit more about the faults. The faults that I always see in everybody is this. They leave the head too much. So flat obviously is here. We're holding this nice and flat. It's nice and flush. I'm maintaining the angle. If I am going to arc away from the head, I'm still keeping the heel of the clipper on the scalp. This is actually keeping me accurate. This is keeping me from moving. And this is also keeping me from making mistakes. So this stays right on the side of the 
head the whole time, right? And that's how we work out these skin lines. People tend to manipulate the length of this when they hold it. So sometimes they'll hold it out like this, right? Well, you're not even getting close to the manu manufacturer's recommended distance now because you've lifted the clipper up, you've completely changed the distance. This is all set up for you to succeed. So as long as you're holding it flat, as long as you're holding it flush, you're not gonna have as many problems. One of the other problems that I see is people tend to rush. Many times they don't complete the skin phase properly or they don't put in the trimmer line properly or they don't have it balanced properly on both sides of the head. Furthermore, they'll be on step five when they should be on step three. So one thing that I'm gonna recommend to you is if you follow my process, what it means is each time you move on, you can look below and you can see that you're perfect. And if you're not perfect, you need to go back to that step. So let's say that you continue on with my process and you find yourself working with a number one all the way up here. And all the while, you still got issues in your skin line. Well, put the number one down, pick it up, go back to your skin line and finish that process. So make sure that you step through very thoroughly and you're going to end the potential for you having any other issues. So as long as your machines are set up properly, you're following a good process, you're holding it flat, the last thing that I could tell you to do is make sure that you're maintaining a slight angle across. So let's say that this, this line here represented the top line and where I'm working. I'm only using one corner of the blade to hit that line and I'm hooking it back and forth. Especially when we get down to the harsh part, we don't want to bring it up straight because if we bring it up straight, we're probably going to wind up putting another triple zero line in a little bit higher than we intended. So just make sure that when you attack these lines, you maintain something of an angle or put in just one corner of the blade. If you put in just one corner of the blade, you're going to reduce the chance for your mistakes. Or if you do make a mistake, they're going to be significantly less work to get rid of. And with your trimmer, especially with your trimmer. If you're going in to flick out that trimmer line, you can flick across that line just like I told you, but just use that corner and be really careful because you don't want to rush. And furthermore, one of the other things that you can check yourself on, if you find yourself doing a ton of cleanup work at the end of a haircut, well, it's probably a good chance that you weren't very thorough in the first place. So once again, refer back to my process, refer back to the steps and make sure that each step is complete before you move on to the next. Also, when having that hair pre-cut down to a 1.5 length makes all of this work a lot more efficiently. If you were to try to do this skin fade or do any of this blending or do any of this wrist flipping into a mop of hair, you're going to fail. You're going to cause inconsistency to happen. It's going to wind up higher on one side or lower on the other, and you're going to make mistakes. So take that extra step, pre-cut that hair down to a 1.5 Put in your line the way that I told you in phase one, and we will rock and roll right through every single one of these skin lines with ease. I want to know how you guys are making out with this. So if you guys could do me a favor, leave it in the comments. If you struggled with it before you watch this video, um, go practice it a little bit. Come back and leave me another comment and let me know how it worked out. I'm really interested to hear about your progress. And furthermore, I'd love to invite you guys to join me on the lives where you can have some really intuitive learning. You can just ask whatever questions you want about it and I can answer it for you. One of the other things that I'd like to address is the wrist flipping. A lot of you guys are going to ask this question. I already know it's going to be in the comments, so I'm just going to get ahead of it before it starts. Now, the only time that I feel it's appropriate to flip your wrist is once you've mastered these cuts to some degree, you understand the process and what you're doing, and you know that you're not going to make stupid mistakes by doing so. For beginners, you shouldn't do any of this wrist flipping. You don't need to. The guards are set up in a way that will make it perfect. Trust me, every single one of these guards balances off of each other. If it didn't, we would all be struggling, and we don't. We get it done, and we get it done right because we're professionals, and you can too. So the only time that I would recommend that you do any wrist flipping is in the initial phase of setting in your guideline with the open taper. In this case, if you can maintain the same amount of space, let's say an inch to an inch and a half, and you're able to do that without a problem, this is a good time where you can begin you can begin the fade into those upper lengths by doing so with the C motion. Now, if we're doing this from skin to a 1.5, the odds of you making a big mistake are kind of small and the odds of you speeding up your process are kind of high. That's why I say it's a good thing to do when you start to build some confidence, when you start to build some experience, and then you can do some wrist flipping and some stuff like that. But is it necessary? Absolutely not. Otherwise, it would be like saying that barbers just get lucky every once in a while when they pull off a good haircut. It would be impossible for us to deliver the consistency in which we do. 
So as far as wrist flipping goes, is it a yes? Is it a no? Leave it in the comments. I'd like to hear from you. But from me, I'm going to say it's a combination of both. Setting in accurate guidelines, making sure that they're the same on both sides of the head. Building consistency is absolutely a key. And doing some wrist flipping to increase your speed is fine and it's totally permissible. Now, in this last one, we're going to knock out one last skin fade. We're doing the half attack again. And you guys can pretty much see and kind of feel the way that I work. So if this is helpful to you, um, please let me know. Leave me a little like, uh, maybe a little comment, something like that. I'm trying to do my best to reply to every single comment I get. This channel... This channel is growing like crazy, and I just want to take a minute to thank you guys for it. If you guys weren't tuning in all the time and checking all these videos and doing all these things, uh, this would have never been possible. And, you know, it's been great to be able to spend this amount of time and really just charge through uh, on this channel. So you guys have allowed me an outlet to just kind of talk and express my passion to you, and I really love seeing everybody else grow and stuff like that. I've been getting messages all the time. And uh, if you guys ever want your cuts critiqued or anything like that, or you want some advice, please just join me on the lives every Saturday night at 8 p.m. We talk about a different topic. I try to carry it on like an actual professional lesson. And I try to deliver the same way that I did when I taught in barber school, which by the way, I taught for about 10 years. Soon, I hope to actually have my instructor, my cosmetology instructor, actually come on my live show with me and uh, talk and tell some stories because that was a long time ago and I think we would all really enjoy that and it would definitely be a little embarrassing for me so you know it'll be it'll be fun it'll be fun uh, but that's it for now guys this is the YouTube Barber Academy I am Mr. Eddie Barber and again I appreciate you guys hanging out give me a little thumbs up if this video helped if, if you if you know anybody who you think this information can help share that thing man send it off to your friends I'm trying to get this out and about so that everybody can grow and uh, everybody can learn so for now Mr. Eddie Barber I'm out of here man about to go do 100 burpees doing a challenge of 100 burpees a day I'm gonna see how long I can do it for so far 200